and it is seven o'clock. I'd like to invite uh, to welcome everybody. This is a uh, kind of an informal uh, virtual town hall forum. Um, we seem to have been um, fielding a lot of questions, um, kind of, you know, different people not necessarily known whom to ask what. So we thought maybe we'd um, get this group together and uh, invite people to ask their questions. What I'm Bob, can they hear us? Okay, um, I'm going to ask everybody to mute themselves um, if possible, or the host will mute you, Tim. Um, and what I'm going to ask everybody to do, if you know how to use um, Zoom, or if you don't, I'll tell you how. At the bottom, on the bottom bar, where you, on the left, you have your mute button and your stop video buttons and invite and all this, there's a chat button. And if you were to click on that chat button, you will have a little window that comes up and it says type message here. And if you're reading it, you will see that I just um, chatted to everybody, welcoming everybody to the, to the video. This is how I uh, would like you to submit your questions. Um, this way we can kind of uh, filter through and if everybody has the same question, we can answer them um, a little more efficiently. Um, and uh, we hope to, to move the meeting along. Um, for the panelists, and I, I will get to the, who the panelists are in a second, um, if you want to uh, answer one of the questions, will you please raise your hand? Do you know how to raise your hand on here? I know, well, you can raise your hand like this, but um, if you want, if you're on page four, um, and I can't see you raising your hand physically. So you're going to have to, um, there's a raise your hand video. Let me see. I'm going to have to find it myself. It's just above the chat box that you were just showing them. Just above the chat box. It's not on mine. It's I below the list of participants and above the chat. Oh, okay. Yours, mine's going across this way. So I don't see that. Oh, okay, That's on if, you, if you click on, on mine, if I click on participants, um, it um, has a raise hand button on that. It, it gives a list of all the participants and it has a raise hand button. So for instance, on mine, on mine you will see my hand is, I have a little hand up in my upper left hand corner. Okay. Any other? Any other information I, you think I should be giving? No, I think that's this? great. Okay. Um, Thank you. Great. So um, I just wanted to assure everybody that even though uh, Town Hall was physically closed, um, we're still open for business. We're still answering the phones. Um, any essential committee mem uh, meetings are still happening virtually as we're having this one tonight. Um, all employees that can are working from home um, and we're working in conjunction with as many people as we can to, to keep information flowing. Um, um, okay. So I'd like to introduce the people that are here. We've um, invited the uh, members of the LEPC, and the LEPC stands for Local Emergency Planning Commission. We have Chief Fisher, um, Alan Lewis, Chief Soros. I'm just looking at my screen, guys, so it's no. Uh, <laughs> uh, Linda F Fantasia and, I, uh, and Tim Goddard, who are all members of the LEPC. And Angela. And Angela, sorry, Angela, I didn't, there you are. Um, and Laurie Eckler. Okay, Laurie, I don't see you on the screen. Okay. Jim O'Shea um, also. Jim O'Shea? Yep. Okay. He's, I don't know if he's on, but he's, he's a member. Oh, oh, he's a member, yes, okay. 
I was trying to introduce members that were here that might be answering questions, but that that's good. Um, I am, do I see, um, let me see, from the Board of Health tonight, we have um, Linda Fantasia. Linda, do you, uh, I'm trying to look through the list. Is it God here? Mitch McConnell, yeah. He said that impeachment diverted the attention of the government. Do you think that in any way, this, this was happening in building at the same time, did it divert mm -hmm. your attention or the team's attention or the vice president's attention? Well, I don't like it. Uh, mute, mute would be a good thing maybe to yes, work on. I mean, I got impeached. I think okay. it certainly devoted a little time to think about it, right? Are we so, being Zoom bombed or are, <laughs> is there somebody that needs to be I muted? That I got yeah. impeached only because they had a majority in the House. They didn't get one. They didn't get one Republican vote. I don't have the ability to, to mute anybody. By the president. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. I think we can. Uh, so Linda. <laughs> oh, here. Now, there's Todd Thorson. I see him on the list. And um, Todd should be Kathy unmuted. Galligan. Kathy Galligan. And on. Kathy Galligan should be unmuted. So if you could raise your hands so that Tim can find you to unmute, or Tim, can you see them to unmute them? Because I'd like to have. <clears throat> I found Todd. There's Todd. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm unmuted. And okay. Tony Mariano. Tony Mariano. Lori Eckler. Sorry. Lee Storr is also just calling in. I don't have Zoom, but I'm calling in. Okay, thank you. Certainly, I guess I thought of it. And uh, we got the president back. I think I probably acted. Hmm. Okay. But she needed herself. Yeah, Lori, I, I I see your message. I'm not I'm not hosting. <laughs> Tim, Tim's the host. Um, so okay. And let me see. Is Christine Lear on from uh, school committee? Christine Lear had another meeting tonight, so she is not going to be in attendance. Oh, okay. Is somebody else from school committee? Here? Well, Nancy Anderson's here. I don't know if any of the other members are here, but I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, Nancy. <laughs> All right. So, um, let me see. Does any, if people have questions, I hope you are going to start chatting them in because I don't see any questions yet. Um, I want to remind everybody, and let me see if I can get to my screen share, um, that we have, um, we've been posting madly on um, the town website, as many links as we can to as many COVID um, um, what do I do? related things that we can. I have, um, I was going to try to share my screen so that I could show you. Some of the ones that we have. So we have, um, you'll see on this one, um, on the home uh, Board of Health page, you have COVID-19. Sorry? We're not seeing your screen. Oh, you're not seeing my screen? I, was, I said screen share. Let's try that again. Screen share. Hello. All right, doesn't want to do it. All right, oh, there it is. You see that now? No. Share. Here it comes. Here. Now we got yeah. it. Okay. okay. So this is the um, 
COVID-19 resource page on the town website. Points you to all kinds of uh, uh, different other pages, CDC. Um, the CDC pages are also very good. Let my COVID page. 30 days, oh, you know what? When I downloaded this er 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 <laughs> earlier today, it was 15 days to slow the spread. It's been updated um, since this afternoon. Um, but it sh shares what the town has been encouraging everybody uh, to be doing the past few days. Um, if you feel sick, stay at home. If your children are sick, keep them at home. Uh, if somebody in your household is tested positive, keep the entire household at home. Don't go to work, don't go to school. Uh, if you're an older person, stay at home and away from other people. And if you're a person with serious underlying, underlying health conditions that can put you at increased risk, um, stay home, stay away from other people. So that, you know, a lot of the questions can be answered by that, by this page. You know, what should I do if somebody, you know, if I've been exposed, stay home. <laughs> Call your doctor from home. So um, please use these, you know, these links, get the information. There's also the um, state has um, a good website and they have a link to boy.com, B-U-O-Y. Uh, where you can check your own symptoms and things like that. So lots of things on the internet, um, uh, good resources. So we're starting to get some questions here. Um, Kate, were you thinking about having um, Chief Fisher say a few words and then- Sure. Uh, the Board of Health. Chief? You Thanks, to... Kate. Can, uh, can you hear me okay? Yep. Um, so the only thing that I, uh, um, I thought would be important for folks to know is that we do get together currently every Monday and Wednesday, Friday, normally for about two hours to discuss planning for our town. So um, making sure that um, um, each of the respective uh, department heads um, knows what the other's doing, what we have in place for uh, getting the needed equipment, and then reporting out things like um, the number of people we have that are out with symptoms um, and what the backup plans are. Um, other important things are, you know, working on infrastructure in Carlisle. So in case we need to ramp this up, in case more people need help, how are we going to take care of folks? Um, and of course, each person goes around and talks about what they're doing in their individual discipline. So from police, fire, um, board of health, uh, schools, um, Council on Aging, um, and um, we've worked through some some pretty significant um, hurdles already, um, but um, I think we're at a good spot. But it's, this is an important time for um, for our town and for the uh, people who work here, um, and um, we're anxious to know what others are thinking. I mean, obviously, I know what people want to know that that call me. Um, and uh, I probably spend hours and hours on the phone every day with uh, people that are on the LEPC. So I think the important thing is, um, uh, thanks for this time, Kate, but uh, let folks know that we're paying attention. We have a plan and um, please stay tuned. And uh, the website is currently up to date. And um, also we're interested. We're interested if, if you're in your house and you're hurting, um, somebody's told you that um, you either need to self-quarantine or um, you're a confirmed case. Um, we do have a database going just so that we know how to help you when we get there. Um, because we have a good amount of equipment, but we need to know how we get there. So you can please feel free to call the dispatch center and, um, and we'll put you down as, as someone that, um, that might need special help when we get to your house. Thanks, Kate. Chief Soros, um, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Sure. So um, this is kind of the calm before the storm. Um, we actually have fewer calls right now for medicals because I think everybody's um, trying to avoid the hospitals. But um, over the next two weeks is kind of when we're expecting things to be ramping up. Um, and we're, 
you know, pulling together our PPE and, and we're uh, training new people and all that uh, to be ready to, uh, to do things. If you do can call, um, if, you, if you know that you're isolating, um, if you can call the dispatch center, as Chief Fisher mentioned, um, and, and again, it's just by the household. We're not gonna keep track of individuals, but just if we know in that house that it's um, a concern, then we can serve you better and we can make sure we can serve our, our uh, PPE by using it when, when we're, it's necessary. So that's kind of um, where it is. I, I do wanna kind of thank people for, I, you know, you're going around, people are out on the trails, but they're, they're observing social distance um, and uh, trying to be careful. And, and that's very much appreciated because if we hit a spike with this, um, it, it, it will be hard. And, and what we've seen, I think, is, is some pretty good uh, following of the, of the directives to, um, to try to, to save. The other way you can conserve PPE, I, I guess I'll mention, is telemedicine. So call your doctor if you have an issue and uh, they may or may not want you to come in. Um, and they, they can do an awful lot over the phone these days. But we're your neighbors, we're here to help you. Uh, so um, if you do need help, give us a call. We, we are ready. We have ambulances, we have fire trucks, we have a lot of people ready to serve you. Okay, to um, your point about people uh, being outside, um, there's a question here about Banta Davis. Somebody went by Banta Davis and saw people playing on the fields and they were wondering if there was something done, being done to prevent this on town land. Do you want me to, want me to grab that, Kate? Yeah, why don't you, Chief? So um, we are patrolling the parks. We're um, being confrontational with folks um, is, is not where we hope to get this. It's, it's friendly reminders, but in our travels, um, I've not noticed specifically um, people um, betraying the trust or, or good ideas that we were, were very reluctant. As you know, Kate, we talk um, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday about the importance of um, our open space. And it's a, it's a perfect place for people to be out, moving around, staying healthy. Um, I would say of the, of the issues we had, the only issues we've had is we have more dogs out now than normal. And we have had a few dog issues, some uh, dogs confronting each other and um, people that are using the trails that, um, you know, dogs aren't a part of their life that are a little more alarmed when they see dogs loose. But, that, and it's, but each of them is resolved pretty peacefully. Um, I'm real reluctant to, to suggest, and I don't know if others have a different opinion about closing Banner Davis or any of our other open spaces because um, it's just a big part of, of who we are in Carlisle. And so far, um, I'm just not seeing it a, as a problem. And that, that's, that's just uh, my view and what I'm hearing from the officers. But it's an excellent question and one we talk about. Kate, this is Alan. Yeah, I, yeah, I just Alan. want to uh, support the chief on this. The, uh, being outdoors is a great thing. We were on the trails today. Uh, as long as you uh, maintain distances, uh, don't gather in groups. Uh, you know, if, if, if you're with your husband or wife, uh, who you're with all day anyway, uh, that's fine. But if, you're, if there are strangers out there, keep your distance from them. And as long as you do that, it should be perfectly safe to be out there in the, in the, in the sun and the, in the wind. Anybody else want to add anything to that? Linda um, and Board of Health, um, there's a couple of questions. I'll start with one of them um, about permitting. Um, there's somebody uh, who has an approved plan and is not allowed to go into the town hall to pick it up and they're wondering how they can get their permit. Is there some way they can get that electronically? or send this, you an email? This, this is Todd Thorson. Um, so fit um, 82 Hillside, when we approve the plan, it's contingent on our septic engineer um, uh, okaying the plan, who looks over the plans. In this case, the septic engineer did not sign off on the plan, so this, this, this application would have to go back before the Board of Health at a meeting. 
So it's not as, as cut and dry as going to the town hall and getting the permit. Okay. So, and you know, just to speak about, you know, the staffing and the availability at town hall, right now with COVID, I would say that Linda Conservative is working 50 to 60 hours a week on COVID activities. In a normal operating environment with non-COVID, we're definitely working 30 plus hours on permits and septic alone. Um, in this case, we have a backlog of permits that need to be cleared out. So I think we have at least six out outstanding ones at the moment. Um, but looking at the COVID cases and looking at the U.S. right now, we're seeing you know, a rising and you know, we haven't seen a peak in cases. And, you know, and given Linda's, you know, time on, you know, the emergency board and all the public health meetings and the MAVIS for epidemiological tracking, right now we simply just don't have the resources to take on building and septic permits that are not considered, you know, emergency ones where, you know, we have septic failure. I would say, you know, if things change in the second half of April, then, you know, that would be a time where we actually put things on the docket and be able to schedule meetings accordingly but we just don't know at the time. I mean, we're just flat out right now. Linda does not, is not too deep, she doesn't have backup. She doesn't have staff that can handle the, you know, her job and take over when she's out there in the field or listening on call. Um, we have a couple of questions about how many cases there are in- Scott, do I get to talk? Excuse me, do I get to speak? Uh, no, I'm sorry. This um, I'm. We're just answering, asking our panelists to answer questions at this moment. Um, could you send us um, an email or um, put put it in the chat? Because I can't moderate. Otherwise, there's too many people. Um, number of cases in Carlisle. Thank you. Number of cases of Carlisle, um, and and an. A, Related question about um, can they be posted, which actually they are being posted daily, um, and can the Board of Health or somebody else speak to the contact tracing that's being done on the cases? I can grab that if, if Linda doesn't want to, but she's probably better poised to answer that, sure. but I'm happy to. I can answer it, uh, Chief. So as of tonight, we have three confirmed cases and we're doing surveillance on five contact cases. Um, was there another part to that question? Uh, well, there's several, you know, several people have asked similar question. Um, let me see. Um, how does the contact tracing work? Are we doing it now? Yes. It work? Yes. So um, those would be notification by the public health nurse to the parties involved. Um, they would be given guidelines about how to self quarantine for 14 days. They would be asked to monitor their symptoms, uh, fever, fatigue, aches, uh, sore throat, anything like that. And then at the end of the 14 days, um, the nurse or myself, we have a number of people doing this, uh, would get back in touch with the contact. This is if they're still basically asymptomatic and they would be released from surveillance. So it's three steps, notification and um, giving them guidance and then checking in to close out the case, hopefully. Kathy, would you also, uh, sorry, Linda, would you also uh, please um, talk a little bit about how we have, you know, what access we have to information, how we get our information, what uh, information is available and what's not. Um, okay. Cetera. So the state has a surveillance program. We call it MAVEN, Massachusetts Virtual Epidemiological Network. Um, the state is tracking suspect and confirmed cases. Now, most of the confirmed cases are through lab tests, not clinical diagnosis. It is possible for a clinician to make a diagnosis and not enter it into MAVEN. So we do know there are cases out there that are being treated yeah. that don't get into the database. Um, we get a contact, a call, either some kind of notice email or a call, 
and um, it goes to myself and also our public health nurse, Trisha McGeehan. And um, Trisha has a whole pool of health agents and nurses she's working with. And if it's a contact case, if it's a concurrent, confirmed case, they get um, they're notified and they go over the isolation. And then to close out the case, um, there's certain criteria for when you can be released from isolation. So the public health nurse is doing that part of it. We're doing the contact tracing, which is following up with those who have been exposed. Isolation is for those who are infected. Quarantine is for those who have been exposed. And all of this information is reported back to the state. They um, the staff of the state. The state is Linda, it's a little bit hard to hear you. Oh, yeah. Don't know. Don't Thank know. you. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, the state is only putting numbers out by county, but they are allowing communities to list numbers only of local cases. And we are notifying EMS, but only of the address of the household. No personal confidential information is exchanged. So you can look at the number, but it would be impossible to identify the person. Involved. Um, the other question is, um, do you get this information from Maven uh, daily, um, seven days a week, five days a week? As soon as it comes in, we get an instantaneous email notice. Okay. And um, so I'm just trying to get these questions answered for people that are, answer that are asking it. Um, so what we have on our, our um, website is as much information as we have, basically. The number of confirmed cases is really all we can report. Yeah. And is that being, I, I haven't looked at the website today, is that being posted uh, with today's date, even if it's the same number as it was yesterday? I mean, is it going up and saying March 31st, three cases, and then if the same tomorrow, it says April 1st, three cases? We, we still have to do some tweaking with the website, but yes, we will have this specific date. It was... The date was on today. I don't know. And I assume you also. Oh, okay. Great. Um, from what I understand um, um, in reading literature, you can usually figure, take the, since they're not testing everybody, you can take the number that's are confirmed and multiply it by 10 to see, you know, how many, if, how many cases there probably are in total, but that's just a rule of thumb. It doesn't mean that that's what we have in Carlisle. But anecdotally, we do have reports of people who've been told by their doctors that yes, they have it by their symptoms. There's no reason to be tested kind of thing. And so that would not be in the state database, but most likely. Okay, I guess the date today is, is still 3.30 instead of 3.31 on the website but there was also a question a little bit earlier about um, the um, emergency preparedness equipment I, I don't know if that was answered it was just mm -hmm. asking d does the town do the police and fire departments have enough of the PPE equipment So Carl, um, do you want to go first? Why don't you go first? So yeah, so the um, the state has been um, <coughs> very conservative about what they think we should need. Um, what they've done is done a moderate job of of supporting the EMTs, the EMS side of things, and they've actually have supplied us with with things. We've also gotten uh, we we have a, a regional cash that we've um, contributed into. And that has been dispersed, so all of that equipment is out. Some of it was 
was expired, but it's still good equipment that we can still use. So on the EMS side, we're, we're probably good for a couple of weeks um, at least. I, and again, some of it is we're changing how we do things. You know, we don't go into a hospital. We can't bring a patient into a hospital without a uh, procedure mask, as an example, uh, where that wasn't the case before. So we'll have to see how many how many of these things we use. But but we're pretty good that way. On the fire side and the police side, they don't. Uh, the state is not supplying, uh, for instance, N95s uh, as much as we think we may need them. Um, so they're supplying where they can, but that's not their, their primary um, focus of getting them to the police and the fire side of things. So, so, you know, in an ideal world, we'd have more N95s. That's the one thing I think we're, we're probably lacking. We have enough for the EMS um, for now, but, but for the uh, police and fire side, not so much. The state has been fairly responsive, MEMA as well, um, and supplying the needs that they think we should have. So if they think we should have it, they, they have been supplying some, some PPE. Chief Fisher, do you need to add, want to add? Well, I think the difference is that you pointed out, Chief Soros, is that what they think is the minimum we should have and, and what we prefer to have are two different things. I will say the three different Carlisle residents, um, after we um, asked for on press releases, brought in N95 masks, to the police department, which we appreciated. Um, I showed them also to Chief Soros. We, we talk every day about who's got what and how much we have. Uh, I also had somebody bring in a box of brand new unexpired N95 masks. So currently right now, we probably have, uh, we have two in each cruiser and then one in reserve, uh, new for each. Um, and depending on depending um, how the contacts go at the places we're called to, is kind of the, the telltale about how how many we'll use. Um, uh, we've all used one so far, um, but uh, would I like to have more? I absolutely would, um, to Chief Sorrow's point. Um, I spoke to our MEMA rep twice today um, because we, we fill the requests out online and they call you and tell you, and they're still not at the point where they think that's what police should have. They say we should be using um, surgical masks, um, we do have um, goggles uh, for those of us who wear spectacles. We have several pair of goggles and we have new um, surgical glasses for those who do not for everyone. Those are in the cruisers um, and we have, um, I think, eight pairs um, back up at the station. We've got a table set up in the library with all the equipment on it so that every time somebody uses something to be replaced. We're going through a lot of hand sanitizer, as you can probably guess. Um, for our calls, we're going through a lot of wipes. We still have a case of wipes um, um, in reserve because our, our normal supply came in right before this hit because we are cleaning um, the cars at every shift and the dispatch center at every shift. Um, and I think somebody asked a question about, you know, what does the police department do? The police department, we're not really doing anything differently. Um, unfortunately, we're not be able, being able to offer a couple of the services we'd like to offer. We're not able to offer uh, the drug drop off right now. We're not able to, to do a needle collection um, right now. We're not able to do um, transfer station permits. Um, we hope to bring those things back in um, once the situation improves. But that's the only difference between what we normally do. We still go to all the police calls. We're still patrolling, um, but um, that's that's probably the difference. And and that's those are our equipment. Um, what I would what I would call deficiencies at the moment. Thank you. Uh, folks may be interested. The schools have been very good at um, uh, going through their supplies, including uh, they have goggles for their science classes. So those we, we now have those, um, and and the wipes that, that they had for the beginning of the year and, and things. So they've been very helpful at, as well at supplying these um, and sharing what they have. I, I would also add that the schools uh, supplied. Um, our administrative assistant with a laptop. So now she can work from home. She only has to come in a few hours every other week. And uh, we do a lot of emailing, some Zoom calling, and uh, a lot of um, uh, moving documents back and forth. But the school brought uh, us a laptop and set it up for us. And to Chief Soros' point, the school's been a, a great partner during this emergency. Um, and speaking of the school, Jim Roche is on, um 
this Zoom if anybody had questions for the school, but I also want to chime in by saying that the schools have been wonderful in stepping up and in a number of different areas um, with help of uh, supplies and spaces and uh, resources that they have. And we are happy to do it. Whatever we need to do, we will take care of. Okay. Um, I don't see any other new questions. If people have other questions, please type them in their chat. Um, if you don't have, I suppose if you have a, if you're just phoned in, maybe you don't have, do you not have a chat? Do we need to let people ask some questions? Yeah. Hey, Angela, I, there's a question about COA. Yeah. Oh, that just came in. Okay. Uh, this is a question for Angela, uh, wondering if we're seeing increased needs in the community for COA. We've been working with Lori Eckler to um, put a procedure in place where people who can't get out it, um, can get groceries and other needs filled. And I think mostly people have been trying to help neighbors. We're dealing with some situations that are unusual, but really are only affected by the COVID-19 because the resources we normally would have are not available to us, but they're not caused by the current situation. Does it make sense for Lori to describe a little bit what the neighborhood team is about? I think that would be an excellent idea because I think uh, this is a new concept and uh, we have uh, quite a few people on line here. Lori, you here, still here? She's still on. She might still be on, but she might be muted. Uh, Tim, let me see. Laura, oh yeah, LC, okay. No, it looks like she has a camera and a microphone. Uh -uh. Laurie, you if Laura, you're, you're, very, you're very weak in your sound. Don't hear you at all. Oh. And I don't see her. Okay. <laughs> Kate, do you want me to try to just give a summary? Sure. Um, we had a lot of people come forward and ask or offer to help. And Lori's um, put together a team of leaders that are going to get the request and pass them down to the other volunteers. She's got a procedure that's very... Um, well organized to handle people and she's trying to match um, people's needs with volunteers in their own neighborhood if that's possible and she's trying first to see whether the volunteers can help people order things online to try to um, reduce any kind of contact and if that's not possible then she's looking into um, how they can get the medicine or the groceries for that person. And so she's working hard and changing the process to make sure it works every day and getting and finding more resources as she goes along. Okay, I miss, okay. Get my Zoom back up. So it doesn't look like anybody has any questions about that. Well, um, if there are no other questions, I guess I just like to encourage everybody to say, stay safe, um, continue to uh, practice social distancing and, and uh, hand um, washing. And we'll see you here again in a couple of days on Thursday, same time, same station. Um, Oh, here's a, a text from Lori. Oh, and um, her speaker's not working. And um, 
the follow on meetings like this one will be same place, same station. Um, <laughs> uh, Thursday at seven o'clock is the next one that we're scheduled. Arnie, you wanted to look like you were ready to say something. I, I guess I just want to echo what a few others have said about um, how great it is to live in a town like Carlisle in a time like this, because I know people are looking out for their neighbors and thinking about people that are living uh, at home by themselves. Um, and just, uh, I think, you know, I just, before I got on this call, I was listening to the you know, the nightly press conference from uh, the White House and the description of what is coming over the next two to three weeks, you know, could be really devastating in some communities. And I think we're very fortunate to be where we are. Um, but also, I think people are really working hard to follow the, the um, protocols, you know, for keeping all of us safe. And so I just want to uh, encourage everybody and thank everybody for looking out for each other. And it, you know, I know it's not going to be, it's not easy now and it, it's going to get harder, you know, to stay just with your own um, members of your family or if you don't have anyone living with you to uh, manage that over the next couple, you know, two to four weeks. So, um, Let's all just keep really looking out for each other and know that we have a really good um, police and fire department and others that are there to help. And so please, you know, if you know somebody that needs help, they should reach out. Um, and that's really what our, this, our local emergency preparedness committee is trying to do is make sure we take care of everybody. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. See you on Thursday. Good night, all. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks, Kay. Good night. Good night. Oh, wait, Laurie wanted oh. one other thing. Hold on. Um, oh, okay. So Laurie's asking that um, oh. in the recent press release that was posted on the town website, it's got both the links to volunteer uh, for the neighbor team and also the form to complete to get support. So, uh, and Angela can make, it, make a note of the bagged breakfast and lunch options at CCHS. Yeah, Angela, do you wanna mention that real quick before we sign off? Sure, CCHS has generously provided bagged um, groceries for either lunch or breakfast. And there's a survey that you can fill out to say what you'd like, and then you can just go and pick it up. And Lori's looking into the possibility of doing that for people as well. And that's available to anyone. Right. That's available to people who have people at the school or seniors or anyone that has a need that um, would like some extra food uh, that's available to them. and. We, the COA has been putting uh, information about food pantries on our News You Can Use, which is on the COA website under um, communication. And you can see the various food shelters that are around if somebody needs them. And we've been also trying to provide any information that we think would be helpful to our residents, like what time the seniors groceries are at what supermarket and any other information. So you can see it online or you can uh, call the COA and we'll add you to distribution, whichever people would prefer. So if people have a need they, that for a senior, just give us a call at the COA office. We're monitoring our phone and following up with everybody. And Laurie sent a message that the Carlisle Neighbor Response Team can pick up bagged breakfasts and lunches at CCHS and deliver them. So you just need to let them know. Thanks, Laurie. Thanks, Barney. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. Have a good night. Stay good safe. Night. Okay.